Hi guys, today we're going to be looking at determining the area of a composite shape using the formula area equals length times width, but for shapes, as I said, that are composite, which means that they're not got uniform sides. So with a rectangle, you'd have two sides of the same lengths and two that are of a different length. But as you can see with this example of a composite shape, they're kind of like shapes where there's, you know, almost like two rectangles put together, which is what this one's got. And it means it's got different dimensions along its sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a grid book to show you how this works and then come back to this example here where we don't have the grid. So what I've got here is the exact same shape as before. So it's got the dimensions of six centimeters, five centimeters, three, four, three, and nine. And I'm gonna to talk to you about how we section the composite shape up so that we can use our formula, which is area equals length times width. So obviously before we section the shape up, as I'll show you in a minute, we can't really use area equals length times width because we don't have a regular and consistent length or width because it's a composite shape, okay? So what we actually do is we look to split the shapes into different sections. So I'm going to turn this shape into two rectangles. Now I could either go this way or this way. I'm gonna go this way for no particular reason. And what I'll do is I draw like a little dotted line here, okay? So now what I've got is two rectangles, shape number one, shape number two, okay? And from here, I can use area equals length times width for both shapes. So what I'm gonna do down here is write one, and I'm gonna write area equals length times width. And then I'm gonna find out what the length is. So the length for this, for this particular rectangle is six centimeters. So I'm gonna put six there. And the width is down here and that's five centimeters. Now using my knowledge of times tables, six times five is 30. And because it is in centimeters, I'll put centimeters squared. Okay, so that's shape one. Next thing I'm gonna do is look at shape two. So in shape two, again, we can do area equals length times width. And this time, we have a length of three centimeters, okay? It would be the same on this side. And the width is the four centimeters down here. So three multiplied by four. That means the area of this shape number two is 12 centimeters squared. Now the third step is I need to add the area of shape one with the area of shape two. So it's a simple addition. So 30 plus 12 equals 42 centimeters squared. So that means the total area is 42 centimeters squared. Now, if we go back to this one here, I can do the same kind of thing. So again, I put my line in here. Okay. And again, I've got shape one, shape two, and I'll go through and do the exact same formula. But what this one shows us is that if I was to multiply these two dimensions and these two dimensions, I would get 42 centimeters squared. Okay. I just don't have the squares. So if you look at this one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. And that's my answer down here. And if I was to do this one, 6 times 5 equals 30 centimetres squared. Four times three equals 12 centimeters squared. 
So I guess what I'm showing you here is that the formula area equals, area equals lifetime width can be used for um, situations where you don't have a grid book. And really that's where we will want you to go. So initially it's good to use a grid book, but this is where we want you to go. So that is how we determine the area of a composite shape. Thanks guys.